because Lucian, you obviously want to be eing forward and dashing forward to do that damage, but if you have so much negating power like Ash and just the amount of CC that Jin is able to provide, then you're gonna have a banger of a time in that bottom lane. And that's why JDG has prioritized the Ash over the Lucian this time around. As you said, handshake deal then for IG's bottom lane. Lucian looks like the easiest response here as Arn and Wink have been really great on uh, on on this duo too. Like Wink, by the way, with 15% of his team's damage, which for a support is just nutty. His most played is this Nami with a 17 KDA. It has been stellar to say the least with Arn coming behind with about 15 KDA himself. So Kitty, we know that what that bottom lane is gonna be. Now the priority for IG is what? the jungle. We already see two jungle bands coming out of the side of IG. That means they're just narrowed down, so Kanavi can't really... Kanavi, my bad, can't really You're get right. a favorable matchup in this uh, game two. But of course, we already saw how much he did with that Gragas flex from game one. So I just think his entire... Is it mojo? I believe I learned this word from yeah. Machine from the previous JDG cast, but the mojo of Kanavi in this game two is just looking fantastic. Yo. If we're giving credit, it's got to be Munchables. Munchables came in with the mojo terminology. He didn't invent the word, but he definitely invented it for JDG. And yeah, it was some real Austin Powers mojo for this team. And I will say, in JDG's wins, they've had mojo yet again. That's what that 2v2 bottom line is going to do in Kitty. Once again, I love this. They're like, hey, you still don't know if this Gragas is going to be top or jungle. I know, they're just playing with the minds of IG and just making wise games like, you're <laughs> gonna pick Jax and we're gonna make you pick Jax and we're gonna lock in this Gragas. It's just blinding it and it's just such an insane flex from the side of JDG. But, you know, a lot of mid laners are still available like the ja uh, like the Azir and the Rai. So I'm not gonna be surprised if Dove does opt into something like this for this R3 pick, uh, but we'll have mm -hmm. to wait and see. Let's find out. As we're talking about this jungle as a priority, Rai's okay. That's gonna come through from IG, get that bottom lane up and rolling already. The thematics of IG Kitty looking a lot better this time around. So run me through some of their bands because they're gonna start with the Jace here in mid. We know JDG are uh, probably gonna be looking at junglers, right? I mean, we still don't know if this Gragas is, is going towards that top or jungle this time. It could honestly mm -hmm. even go mid, but I don't see Knight playing Gragas anytime soon. But oh, yeah, the top laners are going to get narrowed down because YS Chem is trying to look for that perfect lane matchup up against 369 for this game too. And from the previous, uh, I believe, game, we already saw that 369, once he gets into a winning matchup in the Siren versus Jax lane, then he, even if you can't win the early game, I mean, just... It depends on Arn and Link for this game too to let Wise King scale and let him pressure the side lane once again. I love that once the Jax was banned, Wise Cam looked at his coach and was like, What do I what? do? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do I do now? I uh, mean, Camille's you know, last... still up. Yeah, Camille, as you say, you know, Aurelia is something that he has in his pocket as well, guys. Um, just a heads up that last game was the first time that he had lost on the Jax, but apart from that, he's still 3 and 1 on the pick. So. Still a big priority here as we look towards what's left. Viego banned against Gideon. Wow. Gotta respect that. That was their dominating dumpster win against AL earlier in the split that Gideon piloted that. It takes a man to main Viego for them to pick it out in this current oh, yeah. meta. That champion is just terrible up against something like the Sejuani and Malkai. But of course, those two haven't banned out. But just to be sure that Gideon doesn't pop off on this Viego once again, paired up with uh, Dove on this Rise for this game too, then that's just going to get taken off. Of course, Sion has been locked in for the side of YSKM. Wow. He ain't a Sion player. He plays Cassante. He really ain't. But Cassante is kind of busted in like a bruiser carry at times so now 369 getting his option to pick whatever he wants and kitty this might be the oh reverse in the matchup we might get something exciting he came into this series saying that he's going to school wise cam he's literally playing the camille into his own champion the champions wow. have been swapped around for this game too and we'll have to wait and see how 369 really performs in this matchup and already I can see that for JDG, you know, you're not only swapping the champions, but you're swapping the identities. Is it going to be a Knight Yasuo with Bomber Jungle? No really? way. Are we Lock actually- it in, Knight. I mean, Kitty, we're getting excited. I hate it. Hovers sometimes, bait me in. This is his brother. I would take that as a close enough. Yone's still exciting. Ain't gonna be the Yasuo, but still all in Kitty from JDG versus IG going a little bit more standard here as we have to wait for their jungle to wait and see. 
Yeah, IG saves the counter pick for, Del uh, for Gideon this time around. I'm pretty surprised because uh, Wise can just drop the Eagle and pick the Scion blind. And uh, I'm not too sure what Gideon's gonna pick here because you're up against a wacky team composition. We have Gragas in the jungle once again, and 369 and Yo uh, Knight on these carry champions. This is just IG's team composition, but on JDG this time. I can't believe JDG just flipped it around again. Confidence coming through. As you said, Kitty, uh, kind of like IG from game one, but Kitty, this time around, we do have better scaling, right? Like there are more elements, more reliable elements from JDG running into game two. Yeah, I mean, IG going with something more textbook. We have the uh, enough frontline from YSK and then Gideon on the Wukong and Sun, of course. Mm -hmm. We have good scaling. But once again, my eyes are on On and Wink because they have to... Can they do it against JDG as well? Can they take it further to a game three and potentially a win with a comp change here with something more standard, relying on Arn and Wink, who have been so good in this split? IG are going to show us the answer as we head into Summoner's Rift. JDG with a quick invade through the bot side. As Kitty, they will be spotted out by a ward going into this enemy blue jungle. Yeah, that ward does get taken off for JDG, but like you've been saying, this is the first time we see Wise Cam on a champion that is more utility based and not on a carry champion. So this is something extremely new uh, for IG's team uh, identity and like. The pressure for Arn and Wink this time around is immense. And obviously, we are on match point. JDG is currently 1-0. and zero, So it really depends on how Gideon gets this Lucian ahead. But let's be real. If we're talking about pressure, I mean, IG's bottom lane, they, they did away with Gala from RNG. <laughs> they took out Leave and Mako in one fell swoop as well. Hell, even LWX. So pressure shouldn't be that heavy as it looks like it is going to be a topside start and invade start rather here. As YSKM is solo doing blue, just like good old Sionist. We've got a lane swap. We haven't had a lane swap Hysterics. in years. What the hell? Oh my God, make 13.1 interesting again. Did I load back into 2018 or something? You we did. have the Scion taking the enemy's blue buff, Lucian Nami, in this top side matchup where 369 was completely caught off guard, has to burn the TP to come back here. He already senses that Gideon perhaps could be in his own jungle, but he is currently level one. I'm not too sure what he can do here. Okay, we're looking at Scion in the bottom left of our screen here, just whacking away to Grob. Not going to get that full kill, but TP is available for wise cam to go to bot, but he's walking it out at the moment. As, as you said, Gideon going to be spotted. Kanavi there. Blue buff now realized that it's gone. And IG, I mean, this is just playing a game of whack-a-mole, but JG <laughs> at the moment can't really get the right mole. Kind of, he just rocks up to his top side and he's like, oh damn, my blue got taken by Gideon. I'll just go to the enemy's blue side. He's level and he's one. like, wait, the Scion has blue buff this Kitty. time. 369, oh my god. He's level Lord. one. I mean, Gideon three zones him off. You don't even need the kill there. Give Arn and Wink the full lane priority. This is the definition of whoever created Let him Cook. This is <laughs> IG cooking right now. Look one at the TS. kitchen. That's 369 has to flash away. First strike does mighty good job as this dive turns into a three man. 369 with no summoner. First blood to IG the ballers. But can Carnaby do the exact same on this side? I don't think so. His passive is just way too strong. He might even trade True. for a one for one here. Kitty, Sion's a different story, but JDG still have more levels in their back as Bob D is not going to get this spanning strike. Flashes into the barrel though. And YS Cam goes down over the rule. It will have the TP to get back to lane, but JDG with a good response. But the difference is YSKM took that entire way 14 to 1 CS 369 still level 1 at the 4 minute mark. Arn is not giving up on this either. He's not letting him get any XP in this lane. He's got 1 CS. He hasn't even got to one of his numbers in his name. Arn and Wing <laughs> zoning off the wave. Kitty, the turret plating is dropping down. 369 wants to come back in. Arn and Wink this time. They're going to let him get to it. Are they swapping he finally back? Picks up his 
Second they're swapping back. Wave. Oh, they are swapping back. Well, I would say this is an overall dub for the side of IG. Obviously, you got the waves into Wise Cam's hands. 15 CS compared to 369, where he wants to have that good CS lead and he wants to have those items online. So he's able to duel these side laners of IG. But once you're set this far behind, I'm not too sure if 369 is going to have this wonderful game for this series. Well, he had a great game in game number one. I, I want to look at what happened on the other side, Kitty, because gold's actually even after that bottom lane dive as well. As Wise Cam returns to his original lane, as I'm sure 369 will be a little bit happy about. And the wave's pushing up into him, so 369 will be down. But Kitty, as I was saying, bottom side is an issue right now. 10 CS lead here for the Varus over now his original counterpart, Narn. That's a serrated Dirk Varus. There's going to be a lot of burst damage coming through early from Ruler and missing. And they're in control of this lane. Just look at them go. But Gideon's Whoa. already rotating back Ruler. to his bottom lane. So if JDG's not oh. too careful. Heal comes through. As you said, they have to be careful. Flash forward from Arn wants to take down Ruler. Great ebb and flow here as Flash is finally burned. Ruler now without summoners as Gideon shows himself. Gideon was a little bit too slow into this play, but of course Ruler burns two summoners as a trade-off. We also see Kanavi hovering around the side though. As he comes on in, it's all going to take a body slam, but the clone's going to block it for now. Gideon's still running for his life as it's a bit of movement speed. Ease onto the minion wave. A 3v3 in the bottom side. Won't pursue as Arn just does a bit of damage to follow through. Hang on a minute. Arn, dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Arn gets sniped down by Ruler. He walks forward into a Gragas and he feels the might of the belly. As Dub now the one versus one versus nine. Level six, remember, has been picked up and the ulti gives him a benefit of a solo kill for night right in the face. And this all started with Kanavi once again. Beautiful combo connecting onto Arn and just picking him off while we see that Dub was trying to rotate towards this bottom side. Oh my God. Caught off by that. Oh my God. This game. Oh, Kitty. You know, I was coming in today regretting being on 13.1, but not only do we have a lightning storm around our house right now, but we also have JDG just pushing the tempo and matching the insanity of the early game that was IG. Like you've been saying, Hysterix, crazy is our game, and IG introduced yeah. the lane swap. However, JDG comes out on top with two kills ahead, and 369 obviously still a bit behind in terms of that CS, but two kills onto Ruler just means they made up for how much 369 lost in this early game. We're gonna see this play once again. Knight just gets Dove caught out in this middle lane. Doesn't land the ultimate, however, but you know, when you are playing Yone into Rise, it's just a terrible 1v1 situation. Uh, Knight doesn't have any vision here, however, but he is just going to get E ordered. Dodges a lot of these skills from some Knight, but early on, you're just never going to win a 1v1 straight up, up against Knight. I'm constantly hearing lens in my ear. I guess that's because we're looking at the bottom lanes right now as well. Kitty, Arn, unfortunately stepping forward in Kanavi, just punishes him. Oh my god, these jungle mains just see that and they're like, oh my god, that is so satisfying because yeah. we just pick Arn off with that flash connecting as well. Kanavi having a beautiful series up against IG. Definitely a boost of morale for how he came off in that series up against EDG. Kitty, as you were saying though, you know, Ruler the Benefactor twice over now. Two kills, 20 CS in the lead. Mid just got a solo kill. Gideon almost died the flash forward from Knight as well. This early game is going great for JDG and, you know, we did talk about their comp needing tempo, about how they can kind of play this game, snowball effect, right? It's already started off, I'd say better than IG's uh, game one, started off for them with a similar draft. Yeah, I mean, like I've been saying, Arn and Wink are the main carries of this early game, but with Arn not having that flash available, either Cleanse and Kanan just consistently pressuring the bottom lane of IG, I'm not too it's... sure if they can reach that late game. Well, Kanavi's coming through. Explosive cast sends them back in into Ruler's Quiver! Kanavi and Ruler! That's a Karula combination right there. We have Karula, we have Kanai on JDG. Arnie yeah. just having a terrible time on this Lucian. No summoners available, but just all the ultimates on the level advantage that JDG has at this eight minute mark just destroys the bottom lane of IG. And they are looking desperate because this top side, I mean, you are trying to scale, but if your early game carry isn't online, then how are you gonna get there? I think maybe the name should have been Renavi. 
the bottom lane combination. Kitty, so far, Ruler has just been clean in this series. A nice return, a nice setup. I hope we get a replay of that because that was that was cleaner than clean. That was a, a, a bomber into Hail of Arrows. That wouldn't have connected otherwise. And yeah, you I see mean, JDG like this. Tower. No, they didn't. Kitty, it's your turn. Run us through it. Look at it. Oh my god. So look at Kanavi just ulting on into the side of Ruler. Lands an E and Ruler's empowered Q just lands straight away. And on forced into a corner. He can't even dodge because there's a wall there. And he falls as a result of that. Well, as we look at the scoreboard, we notice suddenly JDG are now 2,000 gold ahead. The first dragon went over to IG, but here at this 10 minute mark, IG are trailing a little bit behind. Kitty also mentioned to you guys listening at home that Arn and Wink would really have to be in a good position in this game, but with that lane swap top, that's where it started. But it seems like it's ending towards bot here. But now Knight going in on the 2v1 towards mid. He's feeling himself a bit, but Dove has the ulti and flash. Thinking about it as the damage is there, rather. Look at Navi. He's coming in from a flank He's as well. Some... Get in here. Kitty, I'm worried as he gets away. Bomber flashed into Dove. Doesn't fully connect here as Kanavi now a little bit too far forward. This time around, he won't get away with it. Matchup Kanavi definitely looking for something that we don't see. Burnt the flash and ultimate, and IG responds with a kill. But Arn struggling to get any CS in this bottom lane. Four plates already going towards the side of JDG. I mean, Knight pretty low from the previous exchange. I'm still pretty sure JDG is extremely happy with how this early game Whoa. is going. Arrow, chain corruption, full stacks here for the arrow in the quiver. Out comes a bit more of a hail as Arn takes a bit of damage as well. Chains of Corruption combo, Kitty. It's dangerous. And Arn and Wink are now just going to lose their turret at 11 minutes in the game to this 2v2 from JDG. Yeah, and the Herald went to IG and they placed that mid lane. However, Ruler yeah. with the pure presence in that bottom lane just already grabs the five plates in this early. And Kanavi dodges the E. <laughs> However, doesn't land it onto Dove this time around. A bit too confident from his previous play in bottom lane. And that kill goes towards Dub. A little bit of a breather for IG, but you have to be sent back to reality that Ruler and Missing are now open to the map and they can just rotate to that wall, towards that mid lane. It's Kanavi who tried to defy gravity. I think Kanavi right now is still the best jungler in this early game as Gideon's been quiet yet again here, but still that mistake capitalized quite nicely as IG finally gets something back. But Kitty, 50 seconds to this dragon, and I fail to see a way that IG want to play this considering that you are going to deal with the two item lethality virus at yeah. 12 minutes in the game. I mean, just the pure item differential in that ADC position, and although you put 369 behind, but you have to remember that this is a bottom lane centric meta, and yep. all the fights are going to be happening around this dragon. Where this Sion, unless he rotates Ooh, early, he pause. won't really be seen with that lead. Hang on, Realm Wolf's going to come through. Knight might be in a bit of trouble trying to turn it around onto Arn here. Has the ulti flashed away by Arn. The whole of IG here to help support us. Wink goes over and suddenly I started talking like I was from Texas. Yeah! Well, Knight, <laughs> he's gonna die. He goes on a bit of a cowboy ride. He's culling for the waves to try and set them up for the dragon, but that took so long to kill Knight on Yone. I mean, Knight was definitely caught out in the Wild West, but that does mean it is a 4v5 for this next up and coming dragon. The ultimate from Wise Cam. Missing has to flash over the wall. That's good zoning from IG and Kitty. At the very least, we can say that despite the lead, JDG not in semblance of control. As I say that, close the cast, Gideon flashes for the Axe Prison, misses, but it still zones him away. As Gideon gets double ulti off, missing now in a lot of trouble for the re engage from 369. He was behind, but now he sees flashes outside of the decimating smash. JDG just class as the arrow was going to hit again. JDG are back. It's so easy to see. JDG Ruler is back with his mojo. He is untouched in these team fights and just the pure amount of damage from this virus. IG can't handle it. Even with YS Cam coming into this team fight early, Knight is still fighting. Uh, he's gonna get that base field or rather not the ulti, but the proc on E so Ooh. close. Gideon lucky to be alive as Knight solo zones him out. And JDG just show us that this dragon might be theirs too. Gideon has to just walk away with the L. The blue buff gets taken and barely with any HP as a result of that. But missing, just flashing away from Wisecam's initial engage, really, really good. But Navi ults Wisecam back into the side of JDG and Ruler just played this fight so well. I mean, he just dodged all the CC from IG. I mean, obviously he got hit by the Wukong Cyclone right there. 
369 comes in, locks down Dove, and the Q from that switch two people. But once again, Rule and these team fights untouched and just tossing out so much damage, I actually can't handle it. 4-0 on one on Ruler, 1-0 on three on missing. Four out of six kill participation right now. Important to consider how this early game started out with JDG just playing through that bottom lane. Now up 4,000 gold. You're sitting at home and you're thinking, how did JDG lose to Weibo, lose to EDG? A very different roster, Kitty. I, I, I don't know what's happened over the past couple of days, but this is a, a much cleaner version of Jing Dong. I mean, Ding Dong always had that potential to become one of the best LPL teams we have in the spring split, but obviously a bit shaky in their previous two performances. Mm -hmm. But it's just when you're in a competition, it's mental that matters the most. And we saw that Ruler and Knight, they weren't on the top of their game, for especially yeah. the series up against EDG. But this time, second time into this, uh, game, oh, I believe it's week five, they are looking like different human beings. Well. To close this one out now, Kitty, I got some questions because we asked for JDG to get a lead in this game, really snowball things ahead. What do you want to see now from JDG as uh, there's not too much on the map? Hang on, pause on that. I'll ask you in a second because Gideon's going to be arrowed. Knight's coming in as well. Ball will take it to Nolte. It's a one man, but it's enough. And Kanavi picks up the kill. Tidal Wave for the response as Dove comes in with the Realm Orb. YS can TP for that as well. But nothing given. Bar the kill over to Jing Dong. Really tough map save for Gideon to even face check any of these yeah. bushes. I mean, we have to remind the audience that IG saved this counter pick for Gideon where they selected the Wukong and we saw it doing wonders in the early game. But I'm afraid when the items are online for JDG, you are just way too squishy and you can't be getting caught like that. Missing setting up again to poke them down. Explosive cast sends them away as JDG now just looking to take down the mid tier one turret. That'll be yet another. Yeah, are we going to get this 1v1 again? There's no ulti on Knight, and Dub probably learned his lesson from last time. Is that 1v1 is also something to consider? And Kitty, after opening up mid, they're going to get Herald too, and now I think my question's ever so relevant. What do IG do to stem the bleeding here? Look, JDG's team composition has a big faulty in it. They're all damaged, no tank. They are a glass cannon team composition. Okay. If IG plays these team fights smart and gets picks onto the side of uh, uh, JDG, then I'm a, I'm sure that they can win these team fights and really get to the late game. But of course, like you've been saying, Kanavi's looking for more. Dove now in a 1v3. This has happened before. And IG looks like won't learn their lesson. Yet another kill under a turret here in game two. Kanavi is styling on the boys right now. Is Harold going to get yet another charge? And JDG have now moved up to 6,000 gold. <laughs> Kanavi just isn't slowing down on this Dragon's pick. Once again, full AP. And he is just making everything happen around the map. I believe that he has 6 KP out of 8. And IG just getting caught in the side lanes. Like we've been saying, IG's team identity is playing through the side lanes. But this mm -hmm. time, they've decided to opt into a more textbook composition where they want to scale to the late game and just yep. stop the bleeding. But unfortunately, with how Arn and Wink came out of laning phase, a ruler is way too strong. Oh my god, even 369 is now destroyed yeah. Wise Cam with one item. Hookshot, wall shot away. He's not going to overstay his welcome as Arn and Wink were coming down, but no one else on the map. And Kitty, I love what you said before about the comps that, like, okay, IG are happy that it's all damaged, as now we get to see with the culling out as well. Chain corruption. Arrow! Oh, no! Missing! Doesn't miss. Apparently, the flash wards no! are on the turret. Can't get him! Oh, missing with the savior play. And on you change that around, that anagram. That's more like, nah. This is just, I'm, I'm, this is a pain compilation for Arn. Every kill, just one HP, and he was so close to getting the three, 650 bounty onto Ruler, but he just doesn't have enough damage building the RFC seconds. And that was their way to come back into the game. Oh, here we go again. Realm Warp tries to get him out. Now he's gonna be solo killed. Jing Dong ring the doorbell of death again. I mean, like you've been saying, Hysterics, this team comp, once they're online, they are not slowing down. Kanavi once again looking for this Arrows river. up. Arrows up. There's an Ash. You just love firing it out. Gets getting the explosive cast. Hits him as well. And that nuke damage has gotten even further as Kanavi now level 11 Gragas with 30 CS in the lead. A 2 CS, a 2 XP lead over Gideon in levels, rather. 
It's just showing the difference here. Knight in top side as well. Kitty damage will never matter because IG just won't have enough by the time they actually get to play a fight. I mean, why pick, why pick tanks when you can just pick damage and kill the tanks forehead? But yeah, Knight in the side lane, he, him on the Yon, Dove is never going to be able to match him in the 1v1 and he's getting so much oh. done, especially 369 winning this 1v1 up against YSKM as well. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Gideon's dead and now Kanavi just uh, whoo, waiting for the next one over the wall. Oh. Knight finds him instead. How much has he had to drink? Kanavi doing a bit of drinking and driving on Summoner's Rift. Sorry, I'm too depressed. Oh my god, Arn is having a terrible <laughs> game for this game too. But yeah. Dove just trying Arrow. to get the wave out, has to burn the flash. Missing has Rename. been on point with these Ash ultimates for game two. I think he honestly is the one that is making Arn's uh, game to terrible experience because we saw how Arn just, you know, he forgot about everything. He was going for the bounty, but just missed it out by one shot. They're just consistently trying to get a kill onto the ruler, but they just don't have the damage on the follow-up. Arn should have just kept going forward. I mean, you're dead already. This falls as a result of this as well. Nothing they can do at this point. It feels like game one, but it's happened so much quicker as Kanavi almost solo. Gideon! Well, when he has his second item, when he has that Shadow Flame, Gideon is dead there, as Knight now looking for Arn. This time around, there's a four-level lead between AD and mid. Arn, if he walks in, is just dead as Blast Guns all is going to take no missing flash. coming up as well. Arrow's there too. Get ready for more Blood Sport as Arn is going to try and zone this one out, waiting. The Dax is already used. Ulti from Knight. He doesn't even burn it. He returned, and then Ulti. Dub trying to kill him desperately, but Knight still stays standing as everyone jumps into the corner. Wyatt Cam and he's taking one of these, and Knight still survives. Oh, nice. Hardaway doesn't kill him. The Ulti from Wyatt Cam. Get them! That's something for IG, but they're still all gonna die. A one for four trade going towards the side of JDG at 21 minutes. I mean, this is just a free Baron going to the pockets of JDG, and I'm afraid that they are not slowing down, especially with Dragon Sporting in 250. Once you get these Baron minions online and the lane priorities gets pushed in, IG just cannot contest anything. They're too behind. Let's look at it again, Kitty, because Knight, he holds all his spells really nicely until Arn just dies from everything I mean, but himself. Arn is just trying to get some CS in the side lane, but of course we see two TPs coming out of IG to make up for that play. But Knight is just on one HP and no one is really focusing him down. Dodges the Nami ultimate, gets a bit of healing from the Triumph, and unfortunately couldn't dodge the AoE from Wise Cam's uh, charge, of course. Mula, he's flicking Meanwhile. once again, gets the kill into Wink as well. <laughs> Uh, he's having the time of his life. Good to see Ruler back in action. Eight kills here for the Madman on Varus. Nice Knight's going to get dove, but he hits both with his Q. Dub now zoning away. Doesn't have the ulti. They finally get another kill. Knight dropping down is great, but JDG's response might be better. Is missing now, waiting up for the Good arrow. Selfish. Doesn't have it available. Flashes away from the tidal wave as well. Kanavi might have the return as Arn gets destroyed by Ruler. Almost dying. Chance corruption he escaped from, but now Wink is left it's on his lonesome. It's a final combat! Dun, 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 dun. But well, what it doesn't happen because the cameraman goes to the right. Me. We ignore it. Meanwhile, because 369 gets another kill. Arn dodges away from the arrow. And JDG, these smooth criminals, man, just can't be taught. When do we ever see an ADC zoning off both the jungle mid and ADC of IG? He is just 1v3ing in this bottom lane while Wink was just getting trickled off by the Ash support. I mean. What meta are we with? I think Ruler, he's just having the time of his life on this Varus. I'm just upset the cameraman turned the camera away from missing a quick. <laughs> like, that was just <laughs> such a, such a silly thing to do. Either way, Kitty, there's almost 15,000 gold. This is exactly what you want to see of JDG. And look, for IG fans, everyone out there saying, oh, this team was overhyped. Not really. A bunch of not many names, they're still trying to find picks. JDG are a different beast as Arrow connects the only with the clone. IG have done a lot of work, even against Top Esports, taking it to a game three, against EDG, against RNG. They're still a playoff looking team, but JDG is showing us that they do deserve to be in that consideration for top three still. And will actually end their curse with a win here, putting them up to five wins of themselves. A very big deal, a very big day.
As JNG looked to put, put the finishing oh touch God. on. Brawler snipes down, damage on Dove. He has to flush away, he respects it. Well, 369 might end the game himself. Kanavi turns on Wire's hand. The chance now is Kanavi has to flush away and Brawler gets zoned away, but on at half HP, IG. There now the return bomb. begins. Look at Knight, look at Knight, look at Knight, look at Knight, look at Knight! Goes over the wall, bare bones, bare back, and actually dies, bare bum. IG gonna lose their top lane over <laughs> the response to Twink and Arn running for their lives while 369 bring up the top lane camera. He's just running the game himself, running into the Nexus turrets as Dove first 369 holds it up for the time being, but yeah, get sack. Kanavi gets another, and Ruler with another, and another, and another. When's the next one coming through? Come on, one Hail more arrows, Run him down, and oh, I'm dead I'm again. Dead you can't escape, Kitty. I mean, Dove just forced the back because it's just pure pressure from 369 getting these waves in and getting the inhibitor as well. One Nexus Tower falls as a result of that, and three of the teammates are dead from the bot lane skirmish. Dragon doesn't even. It's not even a uh, consideration for JDG. They're just gonna end the game. They're trying to kill 369 and elongate it a little bit longer. Kanavi gets over the wall. But at 25 minutes, we have 21 kills from JDG alone. This is going beyond a massacre. This is almost 20,000 gold, Kitty. This is like, you know, it's it's rough. People have called me out before for saying it, but it does feel like a solo queue game because of the diversity in teams and how one-sided this is. No, I mean, Hysterics, I set this game up. I said that IG needed on ahead, but this bottom lane, 1 and 10. Gideon just trying to make something happen. Catch something, get some gold. Oh my god! Okay, now, Dub, do you really want to participate with that? You got help with missing, says that the arrow doesn't connect. Now for the Aqua Prison, it might not land, but they should be able to get the kill. A bit of backup is all IG needed, as meanwhile, Arn is dead again. They, Kitty, they just abandoned him. <laughs> There's no help for Arn anymore. He's 1 7 at 26 minutes into the game. And although you pick up the kill from 369, I mean, your entire map is in shambles. Kanavi yep. is going for the flank. He gets popped with just one ultimate. I'm assuming. I, is, the life of an ADC is terrible, guys. Yeah. Well, as Arrow. What? What? That was that an line? assumption. That was just blind. Dub's going to get away. No, he's not. Missing change your name! At least miss some of them! His name should be hitting because he's hitting all these assholes in this game 2 series up against IG, getting the pig onto Dub. They no longer have the wave clear, and the two of these mini waves are just pushing in and suffocating IG as well. I cannot believe the quality of JDG we're getting here. This stomp that has happened over and over for the past I, I, 20 minutes now. As they run into the base, this is the final hurrah as everyone gets poked out because everyone does damage on this JDG roster. And Kitty now running into the next turrets. The whole gang is here. They're going to be running into Invictus Gaming, who had a bit of hope coming into the series, but JDG shut them up, not even letting it go past an hour in total time. Kanabi gets the first kill as Gideon now to think about a way to engage the Cyclone, but the Nexus is bare this time with Ruler and Missing running into Dove. The burst is unreal, and JDG can also return to being unreal in the LPL. Moving to five wins, the curse of that two lost streak is over, and JDG return, return to being absolute beast. JDG is going to be very happy with how this series up against IG went. A clean 2 0, where I think both of these games, IG just was never in a winning position, especially from what we saw out of Knight and Ruler. They just look like different humans after week 4 and week 5. But of course, they are now uh, just one up against a top tier team, which is IG, and handed them their second series loss in a row. Really good stuff from the boys, and I knew I could believe in them for this week five second performance. I think we, we can now believe in them going forward. Like, that was enough 